Hey guys, Rob here with eBuy Gaming, and today we're going to be doing the first episode of our new series on how to build a PC. In this episode, we're going to be looking at choosing the spec and some of the key factors that you need to consider when doing this. Before we get started, we want to say a big thank you to AMD and Western Digital for sponsoring this video. AMD recently released their Ryzen 3000 series of processors, and for this PC, we're going to be using the Ryzen 3600X, which is a great processor for a mid range gaming PC. I'm also going to talk about some of the other processors available within the Ryzen 3000 series and talk about the kind of PCs that they're best suited for. For our storage solution, we're going to be using Western Digital Blue Drives, as these are one of the best options for a mid tier gaming PC. I'm also going to look at some of the other higher performance options that are available from Western Digital, which are worth considering if your budget allows for it. So, the first thing you're going to want to consider when building your new PC is what the PC is going to be used for. There's a range of different use cases that you can have for a PC. Some of these include gaming, general use or content creation. It's important to consider this because each PC is going to have a different set of requirements and different needs when it comes to the process that you're trying to do. For example, for a gaming PC, it's going to be really important to have a dedicated graphics card that allows you to run your game smoothly on the monitor that you've chosen. For PCs aimed at content creation or streaming, you're likely going to need a better processor and potentially more RAM to ensure that your PC can handle that additional load. And then for general use PCs, the most important thing is going to be reliable storage, but also having a processor that doesn't hold you back with general use. Once you've decided what your PC is going to be used for, you then want to look at how big you want the PC to be. You may wonder why the size of the PC matters, but it can often be a limiting factor in the components that you can put in the PC. For example, smaller PCs will use mini ITX motherboards, which can often have less PCI lanes and therefore mean you can't put as many expansion cards into the PC. Smaller cases also often have less options for water cooling and will potentially not fit some of the larger graphics cards which would be needed for high spec gaming. Therefore you want to work out where the PC is going to go once it's complete and how big you can go with the case. From there you can see the kind of motherboards that you can work with and you can work out whether they're going to be suitable for your use case. And finally you're going to want to think about your budget. So it's really important when you're building a PC that the budget is considered as you want to make sure that you're consistent with all the parts that you buy. What I mean by this is you don't want to overspend on certain parts, for example buying a £150 processor and then a £1000 graphics card, as that can introduce issues such as bottlenecking and potentially throttle your PC's potential. Often people will think you can get away with a lower spec processor and then spend all your money on a high spec graphics card to get the best performance. Unfortunately, that's not the case, and you want to make sure you get the right balance between the two. This also goes for other components such as the memory and how that interacts with the motherboard. So in this video, what I'm going to be doing is building a mid-tier gaming PC. So I'm going to show you the spec that we've got for this PC, and I'm going to talk about some of the reasons why we've gone for each part. Okay guys, so this is the spec that we've gone for for our PC. As I mentioned at the start, this is a mid-tier gaming PC and we've had a total budget of around £1,200 for this system. So what I'll do now is run through the components and talk about some of the main things that you need to check as you're going through this list. So at the start of the video, obviously we decided on the size of PC we were going to go for and for this we've gone for a full ATX tower. The EG Diamond ATX tower case was a great option as it has plenty of fans and has some nice tempered glass side panels. It's also a fairly reasonable price, which was important in making sure that I still had some budget left to have a decent graphics card and a decent processor. The case comes with three RGB fans and has support for a full ATX motherboard, which is what we are using. If you're looking to use water cooling, you want to make sure your case has, has enough room for an all-in-one water cooler to be installed, as this includes both a radiator and the fans. So, for our power supply, we went with the Corsair CX550 semi-modular ATX power supply. I went with semi-modular to save a bit on the price, and as we have a full ATX case anyway, we should be able to tuck away those extra cables quite nicely. There's three main types of power supply, which are both standard, semi-modular and modular. The modular ones feature completely detachable cables, so you only need to connect the cables that you require for your PC. If you're going with like a mini ITX system, I'd definitely recommend doing modular as you may not have the room to tuck away those extra cables. When choosing a power supply, you also want to look for an 80 plus rating. The 80 plus certification basically is just an efficiency certification, it means the power supply will operate efficiently with less heat and less operating costs. Corsair is a great option for power supplies, but there's other brands such as Seasonic and Be Quiet which are also fairly good. I've used Corsair in the past for a few systems, which is why I regularly go back to them for my PC builds. 
When choosing a power supply, you want to make sure that you've got enough power for your graphics card. So you'll see in a minute that this is linked closely to the recommended power supply for the graphics card that we've chosen. This is also an ATX power supply which is designed to fit our case. For smaller cases, you may find you need an SFX or an SFXL power supply. For our motherboard, we've gone with the MSI X570A Pro. This is a full-size AM4 motherboard which features plenty of PCI lanes and memory slots. While we won't be using all of these slots initially, it gives us options for upgradability in the future. The most important thing to check here is that we have the same socket type as our processor and that the motherboard supports the correct generation of processors that we're using. You can see here, out of the box, this motherboard has support for second and third gen AMD Ryzen processors. And as we're using the Ryzen 3600X, that will be fine. One of the other things worth checking is the memory speed that your motherboard can support. Some more standard motherboards can't support high speed memory, but as you can see with this one, we can go up to 4400 megahertz however if you are looking to use high spec memory it's well worth checking the motherboard manufacturer's website before buying as they'll have a list of memory that they've tested and confirmed to work with the motherboard sometimes you can find with the high spec memory that certain modules won't work or will cause instability in your system so if you're spending the extra money on high spec memory this is well worth checking you also want to check that your motherboard has the correct pci lanes for your graphics card we can see this one has a PCI 4.0 lane. Our graphics card is PCI 3, but that's absolutely fine as PCI 4 is backwards compatible. If you're building an older system, you want to make sure that you don't have a PCI version that's older than that of your graphics card on the motherboard, as this can potentially throttle the performance of your graphics card. And the final thing you need to check is the storage options. So we can see here that we've got a connection for an M.2 drive and also for six SATA ports if required. For this build, we're going to be using one single M.2 drive and then a single SATA hard drive. So there's plenty of connection options there for us. You can also see the amount of USB ports that are included, the LAN options and the audio functionality that's included on the board. So for our processor, we've gone with the AMD Ryzen 5 3600X. As I mentioned at the start, this is a great option for mid-tier gaming, but could also be used for entry-level content creation. If we look at the Ryzen 3000 series, there's a variety of options available. You can see here we have Ryzen 3, Ryzen 5, 7 and 9. The Ryzen 7 and 9 processors are the highest spec processors that feature high core counts and high thread counts. Having more cores and threads is great for content creation and streaming, and these are the sort of processors I would recommend if you're looking to go into that. If you're just looking at gaming, then the Ryzen 5 is going to be a great option. 3000 series of Ryzen 5 have 6 cores and 12 threads, and there's also the 3400G which features integrated graphics. And finally, if you're looking at a PC for general use, the Ryzen 3200G would be a great option. As you can see, this is a great value option, which has four cores and four threads. This is going to be perfectly fine for general home use, and it also features integrated graphics, meaning you don't have to buy a graphics card. So for our memory, we've gone with Corsair Vengeance LPX, and we've gone with a 16GB set. For the minute with gaming, 16GB is about enough that you'd need. If you're looking to do content creation as well, I'd recommend looking at potentially getting 32GB. The LPX set are a really reliable set that I've used plenty of times in the past. While they don't have any flashing lights, they offer great value for money. So the next part of our PC build is the Western Digital Blue SN500. This is an M.2 NVMe SSD which we're going to use as our primary drive to have our operating system on, as well as a few applications. This drive is a great option for a mid-tier gaming PC, but if you're looking for something that's slightly higher spec, the Western Digital Black version features almost double the read speed and a slightly increased write speed compared to the blue. When you look at the price difference, it's about £15 in between the two, so depending on your total budget, you could consider going to this drive as well. The main thing to check with this drive is that the form factor and the interface are supported by your motherboard, so again you want to just cross-check this with the motherboard specification sheet. You could also potentially increase the size of this drive depending on your budget. Because this is a gaming PC, we also wanted to have a 1TB hard drive to store most of our games. To ensure that the load times are still fairly reasonable, we've gone with the 7200 RPM version. There's also a 5400 RPM version, but I'd recommend going with this one if you're using it for gaming. The main connection to check for this is the SATA connection, which as we can see here, it supports a SATA free interface. You also want to make sure that the case that you've chosen has got a bay that supports a 3.5 inch drive. And next up we have our graphics card. So we've gone with the MSI GeForce RTX 2060 Super Gaming Graphics Card. This is an 8GB graphics card that's going to be perfect for high, high refresh rate 1080p gaming or entry level 1440p gaming. When we looked at our power supply, obviously I went with a 550 watt. 
And the main reason that I went for that is that that's the required power supply for this graphics card. You can see the card requires an 8-pin PCI Express power connector, so you also want to check that your power supply comes with that. We can see that the interface for this card is PCI Express 3.0x16. Our motherboard has two PCI Express 4.0 slots, which will work fine as it's the next generation. If you're buying a slightly older PC, you want to make sure that the PCI Express interface is the same as the graphics card or higher. If you go lower, then there's potential that your graphics card won't be able to run at its max potential. The only other thing worth checking is that the connections that are available on the graphics card are correct for the displays that you're using. And then the final part of our system is the operating system. We've gone with Windows 10 Home 64-bit. If you're using more than 4GB of memory, you want to make sure you go with the 64-bit option. And this comes on a disk, so make sure if you don't have an internal disk drive, you've got an external one that will allow you to install the operating system. So that's going to be it for this video, guys. I hope you found this helpful, and if you did, make sure you leave a like on this video. If you have any questions about your own PC build, then feel free to leave these in the comments below, or join our Discord server where we have a dedicated tech help channel that you can use. In the next video, we'll be looking at the actual build process for the PC. And I'm going to take you through that process, talking about some of the key things to watch out for and what you need to consider when building your PC. Other than that, I hope you guys have a great day and we'll see you in the next video.